Hi there. Today we will be going over how to do voltage checks on the USonic R level transmitter. The USonic R is Drexelbrook's continuous ultrasonic level device, capable of measuring two tanks simultaneously. It features power options with 120 or 220 volts AC and 24 volts DC, along with two analog outputs with six independently programmable relays. Knowing how to perform these voltage checks will give you the ability to make sure your transmitter is operating as it should. To do your voltage checks, you will need a multimeter set to volts DC and make sure that your transmitter is powered on. You want to start by opening up your panel using a Phillips head screwdriver. Open your panel. Now voltage checks are performed on three areas of the transmitter. The power supply terminals, the analog output terminals, and your sensor connections that are below this metal panel here. To remove this metal panel, you have a Phillips head a screw that will need to be removed. So let's remove that. Removing that panel will show the sensor terminal connections. Right now at this moment I do not have a sensor connected, but later in the tutorial we will. Now first, let's check the input voltage terminals. This is pretty easy because whatever voltage you've applied, whether it's 120 or 220 volts AC or 24 volts DC, that is what the terminal should read. On this particular unit I've applied 120 volts AC. So we're going to set our multimeter to volts AC. Take our leads. And I'm reading the proper voltage, so my power inputs are good. Next is the analog outputs. There are two analog outputs, one for each sensor, since the USonic R has the capability of measuring two different tanks at the same time and each provide its own 4 to 20 output. To do this check, you want to make sure nothing is connected to these terminals. With an open circuit, the terminals on the plus and minus connections should read between 24 and 28 volts DC. So now I'm going to switch my multimeter to volts DC. Apply my probes to both the positive and negative connections on the analog output and I'm getting 27.3 volts. So the first analog output connection is good. And I'm going to perform that same check on the second analog output. And I'm getting 27.3 roughly again. So both of my analog outputs are functioning correctly. Lastly are your sensor output connections. These connections provide power and communication to your sensors. Now you're going to want to check the voltages with and without a sensor connected. Now, I only have one sensor with me, so for this demonstration, I'm only going to be checking one set of terminals right here. Without a sensor connected, the terminal should read between 22 and 27 volts DC. So once again, take our probes. Your red, your red or positive probe should go on channel 1 or channel 2, depending on which sensor terminal you have to get connected to. And your black or your negative probe should go to the common on the center. All right, and it looks like we're reading 23.3 volts. So it looks like we're just within range of our terminals being correct. All right, and just for the sake of checking, we can check the second terminal as well. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna take a sensor and we're gonna connect our sensors to one of the outputs. With a sensor connected, the voltage should read between 14 and 17 volts DC. So I'm going to go ahead and use a precision flathead screwdriver and connect our sensor terminals.
Now that our sensor is connected, we're going to do one last voltage check. Check the two terminals. Should be between 14 and 17 volt, and we're getting 16. So that means, since our, our voltages are in the correct range, that means our sensor is communicating properly with our motherboard. Now, if you experience any of your voltage readings outside of its normal indicated range, this may indicate that you have an issue with communications either going to or from the sensors. Now, if you experience this, we highly advise you to contact our service department at the phone number or email address shown on your screen below, and one of our technicians will be more than happy to assist you and get you up and running again. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.